Hello everybody and welcome to Lauren Loves Color. This is Lauren. Um, this is a little odd what you might be seeing here. Um, I am here to color the this or that tag um, part two. I am coloring out of 50 autumn miniatures. This is one of the books I was so kindly gifted. This one came from Elizabeth um, at ER Joy. She gave this book to me so kindly for my birthday. So my goal for my, um, one of my goals for my birthday, uh, which my, which my hashtag for my birthday is May birthday coloring is to color one book out of each page that I, or one page out of each book that I was gifted. Come on words, Lauren. Um, and so I am deciding I got all of the miniature series. Um, so kindly gifted to me by various people. So I am doing the nameplate page. I figured that was the least intimidating um, thing maybe to color. And I've done two thus far. I did romantic miniatures um, as a buddy color. I have done ocean miniatures. And then I decided I wanted to just change up some color palettes and go with autumn. So um, I was halfway into this and was like, hey, I might as well just film the process. I needed to do this tag. So you guys are going to kind of join me for my ride. I am using for this um, and for these pages in general, what I am doing is laying a base of alcohol marker and then going back in with my Prismacolor pencils. I don't know that we'll get that far um, um, through the tag, but what I can guarantee you is that I will at least um, keep coloring um, and you'll see me finish this page and speed color through it. So I'm really enjoying these books. Um, they don't take very long to color and they inspire some creativity. So yeah, so I'm really excited. So let's go ahead and get to what you're here for, which is the um, coloring tag. So the, and I was so kindly, I'm so sorry, I was so kindly tagged by three people, um, Amber from Strawberry Board, Meg from Meg's Art Atrium, and Ms. Turtle from Pickwick Turtle. All of them have YouTube channels, which I will link down below. Um, and I did not think about who I want to tag, so I will come back to that um, at the very end. Um, I'll do a little outro once I have um, finished this page. So the very first question says coloring in bed or coloring at a desk. Well, that one is actually fairly easy for me. Um, I do not color in bed. Um, I rarely even color on my couch. I color at a desk. Um, this is the desk you guys have probably seen. Many of you have probably seen my coloring space tour. And in that tour, I show my desk. It is actually in old, my old dining room table, which I have moved upstairs. And this was supposed to kind of be a homework area, future homework area for my kids, but has really turned into my work desk since I have been working from home due to the pandemic. That will be changing soon. I will be going back into the office um, very soon. Um, we're actually in the process of moving some things around right now but I am changing buildings and so I have to wait for the person who is currently in my office my new office to relocate and then I will be able to move in but um my mom always taught me my parents actually always taught me that your bedroom is your bedroom it's for sleeping um, and it's for a quiet time and time with your spouse. And so for me, my husband and I have always made it that role. It's kind of our sanctuary. It's kind of just our place to just be us and to just relax and to not have stressors in the bedroom. And so while we're not great at some things, like we have our cell phones and stuff in bed, and of course we're like checking Instagram and Facebook and email and all those things, um, what we are good at is that we do not have really any other distractions. We do not have a TV, um, in our bed. And I don't think my bed would be comfortable. I, like, I just don't think I could get comfortable enough to color in bed. I don't know. I just feel like that would be interesting experience for me. Okay, number two, Crayola Super Tips or Stadler Markers. I only have Crayola Super Tips, so I would say Crayola Super Tips. Water-based markers are not my favorite. Um, I don't like how streaky they are. I've tried to love them. I've wanted to love them. Number one, because they're so inexpensive. They can't. They can get expensive. Like I have the Tombos. Um, those are obviously crazy, insanely expensive. 
Um, but I have the Crayola Super Tips, and honestly, I like those probably the best um, out of any water-based marker that I've owned. Um, the Tombos are okay, are nice for some things, but they're not my absolute favorite. And I also own the Ohuhu dual brush pens. They are like a um, brush on one side and have like a super fine liner on the other. And honestly, water-based markers are just not my jam. So um, I do not have the Stadlers. I have a kind of like knockoff of the Stadlers that I have from Walmart. Those are actually pretty nice and they're very inexpensive. Um, I think it comes in like a pack of 60. I'll show it to you guys one day, but um, um, that's actually pretty nice. I do I do like those markers, but I haven't used them in a, um, in a coloring book before. Um, next, Erie's Romantic Country series or Tracing series. This one's also fairly easy for me I, because I only have one. I only have a Tracing series book. I have the World Festivals Tracing series book. I got it after I saw Emily at Color Me Impressed. Um, she's here on YouTube. She was coloring out of that book. I've also seen Danielle Danny Buttons mention it. I don't know if I've seen her color out of it um, or not. I can't remember, but... Um, I have that book and I love it very, very much. I love that it's, you, you literally just trace the lines. It's got kind of like lighter, um, lighter, lighter line work in that book. And so to me, it's not as intimidating as some of her other work. Um, honestly, I don't, some of her books are easier than others. I wouldn't mind owning another one of her books, except again, they're like, you have to use water-based markers. Many of her books are um, double-sided. And so that's a large reason why I don't own a lot of those fancy books. It's like I'm not going to pay $35 for a book that I can't use my alcohol markers in. You know, like that's my that's my dilemma with some of that. Um, ooh, number four. Such and Such Diva Color by Number or Color Questopia Color by Number yikes um oh gosh okay so I would say the equivalent of that to me is like choosing between your parents if somebody came to you and said well do you like your mom more or your dad more and well maybe some of you that might that might be an easy question to answer it's a very hard question to answer for me um such and such diva and color questopia are the two kind of ogs for color by number um, they're two of the really first color by number books that I've owned and, um, I love them for different reasons. Um, color questopia, I love because of the simplicity of it. Um, I honestly go to color questopia usually in the middle towards the end of the month because I'm usually tired of trying to be creative. Um, if that makes sense. And because their pages are lean on the simpler side like sometimes like I love coloring out of books like this too and kind of getting to stretch my you know creative outlet but at some point too it's like I just want to know where the blue goes and I just want to know where the green goes and just something simple and easy something I can knock out quickly like within you know within an hour and something that I'm going to be happy with and Color Questopia just has such a large range of coloring topics that I love them for that. Such and Such Diva I love for a different reason. Now he also has a large range of coloring books and topics but what's unique about Sachin is that he also has a large range of different types of coloring books. So he has some that are really geared more towards children um, but I really like those because they are, to me, extremely, again, just relaxing. But I can also, because of his beautiful use of color, I can do things like put down base marker, add some stickles, add some shading on there, and the pages turn out beautiful. So sometimes I make those books intentionally more complicated than they should be because of the fact that I really, really like, um... I really, really like the the direction, like the, um, that is not the right marker. Sorry. I really, really like, you know, kind of like what he's, 
what he's done with the image. Okay. All right, sorry, I'm just testing out my different markers. I pre-picked the colors to try to make this slightly easier because I figured if I'm trying to film a video and trying to do this, are these colors trying to bleed through? That's kind of odd. Um, if I'm trying to do this and this tag at the same time, that it was already going to be challenging. Okay. All right. So next is going to be Hannah Lynn's simple version of the page or more detailed version of the page. I only own one Hannah Lynn book. That's the Whimsy Girls at Work. And I would say that I like the more detailed version. It depends. The simpler is almost a little too simple in some ways, like in some pages, they're so simple that I, I usually tend to gravitate towards the more simple pages or the more simple um, images. My challenge with that though is with, um, my challenge with that though has to do more so with the fact that um, on some of the like really, really simple pages is that there's a lot of empty space. And so trying to figure out how to fill that space is challenging for me because um, trying to do alcohol marker in that big of a space is really hard. So um, I have a tendency that I think I've consistently gone towards um, doing the more complicated version just because I'm trying to kind of usually if I'm doing like a um, Hannah Lynn I'm trying to challenge myself to go a little bit harder however I have recently acquired some new books through my haul with um, my birthday that you will see um, or maybe you've already seen by the time I post this video um, have, have acquired some other books that I would say are a little simpler that I think are going to lean towards um, kind of simpler versions of what I would consider a Hannah Lynn style that are going to lean more towards my um, um, keeping it kind of simple and fun. All right, number six, coloring animals or coloring people. Um, so I am coloring an animal right now. However, I will tell you that probably my preference is to color people. Um, I have really enjoyed coloring like, um, but I would say like not realistic, realistic people. I'm more so like, I'm interested and enjoy more so coloring things like chibi, animated people, um, kawaii, that kind of stuff, um, coloring actual like realistic looking people is somewhat intimidating to me um just because I want to get the skin tones and everything right but when I feel like it's more of a character um like same thing like coloring like Disney characters and stuff like that is okay um that's not as scary to me because it's not real if that makes sense like it's 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 not real it's more um it's more, um, you know, like a, like a character. Okay. What color am I going to do that stem? So I am looking for, I think that's the color of the acorn. I need like a brown. Let's see here. Um, while I'm looking at this, let's answer my next one. <clears throat> Plan your colors advance or wing it. <laughs> um, while it may look like I am winging it right now, I am not intentionally doing that. Usually I pre-plan my colors. Um, my colors, let's look for 94, right here. Um, I usually don't wing it. Um, for like this page, for example, I um, used a color palette that I found off of... Um, Google. I just Googled it and this was what I came up with. Um, and so I, uh, like I said, I've already looked at the, um, colors and picked out my colors here just to make sure they're cohesive. I've, I've actually studied a lot of like color theory and stuff. And while I think I grasp the concepts, it's honestly just much quicker and easier to look at a color palette and say, yeah, that's kind of the color feeling that I'm going for. And just color that way. Um, 
And so I like that technique and that's really easy. Um, usually when I wing it on a color palette, which I used to do, and honestly, that's how I started was just by winging it. Um, I wasn't happy with the color palettes I chose because I was like, oh, I like this color and I like this color and I like this color, but the colors didn't always go together. So it looked not cohesive. And so I, um, now I use color palettes and I think it ends up looking much, much better, much more intentional and much more, um, um, it gives me the overall feeling that I'm usually looking for in a coloring book as opposed to just picking the colors myself. Um, straight coloring or blended coloring. Um, so I would say for the most part, straight coloring, if I do any type of shading, which I will do on this page, and I've been doing more and more of it, um, it's just shading. So I don't know that you would consider that blending. Um, I'm not doing like two, like three color blends, you know, or anything like that. I'm more so just wanting to create like a little bit of contrast to kind of make the colors pop off the page a little bit and give it a little more dimension. I am, I'm never really looking for, um, um, never really looking to do anything that's like, super advanced with this. Um, color by number or color by colors? Ooh. Um, so when she's saying color by color, she's talking about the Kira Shershneva color by color series. Um, that's a fairly new series. I love it very, very much. I will say though, I love it because of Kira's art style um, and her artistic nature. Not necessarily because I enjoy the coloring experience that much more. I do like that you don't have to like look back and forth to the numbers and things like that, but um, I would say that there are probably many artists that if they tried to do a color by colors, I probably would not be as interested in it. Um, I just really like Kira's books. I mean, I think if they came out in a color by number, of the books that she's come out with in the color by color series, I would probably go for those, um, go for those too. So I'm going to say color by number, um, for that one. Let's see. I'm going to choose this color here. Um, okay. Alcohol markers or Sharpie permanent markers. Well, I'm using alcohol markers right now. Alcohol markers are probably going to be my choice. Um, I have both. I actually have quite a few permanent markers. What I liked about permanent markers that now I don't have a problem with anymore was I liked with permanent markers that um, they were less expensive than al regular alcohol markers. And what I liked about them too was that you could um, get into smaller spaces. So like in a book like this, permanent markers work very well because you can get into these like little tiny nooks and crannies. Um, now with like the towel tree markers now being available and things like that, that has eliminated that issue for me. And so I will say that um, alcohol markers are really my go-to. I especially love the towel tree, the color range that comes in the towel tree markers. That's probably my favorite color range um, for a marker that I own. Um, next is going to be coloring images realistically or wacky colors. I wish I was a wacky color girl. Like I wish that I could be creative enough to do that. I've seen, um, Danny Buttons and several others do these kind of like wacky color challenges and stuff. And, um, I think that's amazing. Um, I applaud the bravery um, that it takes to do something like that. But honestly, I'm going to color something realistically as best as I can. I try to maybe like, I may change like the brightness of the image or things like that. Like I might make something brighter, slightly slightly more fantasy than, than what it is in reality. Um, but for the most part, the ocean's going to be blue, the sky, you know, the grass is going to be green. Like that's really mostly what you're going to see from me. Also with doing color by number, I will say that it's also to whatever the, um, 
the illustrator wants it to be. If they want the grass to be orange, then the grass will be orange. So um, I will follow color my number to a fault, even if I disagree with what the color choices are, because for me, it's about understanding how the artist saw that image um, and what they wanted it to be. And I like to see, see their image kind of comes to life at the very end. Um, okay, let's see here. We are moving right along. I like the colors in this. I think this looks really, really nice. This is giving me some pumpkin spice type vibes. And it's looking a little flat because it's just alcohol marker. But I know in the end it's going to look adorable. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do with this guy. I think I'm going to do this maybe lighter or this darker um, brown on top. And then for his underbelly, I need to do maybe a lighter brown that I don't have. So um, let's do the top first. Okay. Oh, coloring while listening to a podcast, music, or audiobook. Okay. So I just saw Jamie's video and I had to laugh because my answer is exactly the same. Um, I... I have two kids. I have two very, very small kids. Um, both of my kids together, they are both under the age of five and they are loud. Um, also, I sit on conference calls most of the day at work. I have a lot of noise um, in my house constantly. And um, so for me, I usually color in silence. Because usually when I'm coloring, it is right after I have gotten my kids ready for school and packed them up with my husband to take to, to, take to daycare. Or it is um, right after work and I have just finished work for the day. Um, or it's on the weekend when my kids are napping. Or it is like right now when my kids are sleeping. And so... I can't really make a lot of noise, but also I don't want any noise. Um, there is plenty of noise in my house. <laughs> and so for me, it is very, very nice just to have some peace and quiet. Um, if I had to choose from one of those, I would probably say it's going to either be podcast or music. Sometimes I do turn podcasts on on YouTube. Um, I don't listen to anything in particular that's like super exciting. Um, mostly listen to kind of just trash stuff that's like um, pop culture and, you know, that kind of stuff. Nothing really that exciting, but um, just usually to have just something on if I feel like I want to just have something running. I've tried audiobooks before and I just can't get into it. I don't know why. Um, Kirby Rosanna's Worlds Within Worlds or Fragile World. I don't own either of those books. I don't own any of Kirby's books. I think they're slightly, um, they're not intimidating. They're just, they're honestly just not my style. Um, let's see. I want to do, let's grab number 101 and then let's grab a pink. Let's grab... 28 and 101, 28, 101, 28 and 101. Um, so, but I have seen both of his books and, um, while neither are really necessarily my vibe, um, I will say, I think Fragile World is really cool. Um, I love the whole concept behind it and that it's kind of just raising awareness for endangered animals um, and things like that. Um, and so I like the vibe of it, but I also like the images. They're slightly more, um, they're slightly less intimidating to me. And what I like about it too, is that I feel like, um, I feel like it's a little more approachable. Like for the first time, it's like, I see people flip through it and, um, like Meg from Meg, it's our atrium. I was just watching her May plans and she was talking about Fragile Worlds and she was looking through different pictures in there and kind of deciding what she wanted to do and kind of talking through it. 
And I was like, you know what, for the first time I kind of saw a color palette. I kind of saw a, um, in my mind, how I would color one of those images. Um, don't get me wrong, like I said, still not my vibe, still not interested in owning a copy for myself, but um, at least at this time. But um, I do think that book I do slightly like better. Worlds Within Worlds, gosh, that is just, that's just, that book is just crazy to me. Um, people's pages, you know, are astounding. Um, people who have completed pages out of their um, I feel like I would look like a toddler and a color, you know, coloring out of that book, um, trying to even attempt to color. And I know that's not the point. I know it's not a competition, but when I step away from something, like when I color something, like even just these miniature books, um, as I'm coloring them, I want to walk away from them and feel like, wow, um, I'm really proud of that page. And I feel like I would walk away from Kirby's books just being frustrated and just be like, wow, I'm, I feel like I'm not that great. Also, because those pages probably take people many days, if not weeks, to complete a page. And um, if you heard, it might have been my last this or that tag, but it was a tag that I did recently where I was like, you know, I don't like to step away from images not complete. I will stay up till two or three in the morning if I have to, to complete an image just because I don't want to have an image undone. And I know that is so unhealthy and so just wrong, but I just don't want to have an image undone. Um, Camellia Andalkova Mandala's or miniature series. Okay. Well, I'm working on her miniature series right now. And um, I will definitely say I love the miniature series. Now, I have only one of her Mandela books, and I haven't colored any yet, but I will this month. Um, and that is her book, um, the Midnight Mandela's book. And um, ooh, which one do I color in? These are slightly confusing to figure out, like, which one to color in. <laughs> I think I might have just colored in the wrong one, but that's okay. The eyes are kind of funny on these, um, but I love the miniature series. I, you know, it was kind of funny because when I actually got the book, um, or got all of the books, like I got them all like within a week, it was crazy. And I opened, I was telling Danielle this, I said, I opened the, I opened all these packages and I laid them all out and I was like, oh gosh, I hope I like these <laughs> because, um, I was so worried, like, oh my gosh, all these people gifted me these books, and now I'm going to say that I don't even like them. <laughs> but no, I do really, really like them. I've really, really been enjoying them. Like I said, this is my one, two, three, fourth page um, that I have colored, and I really, really like it. Okay, so this is now complete for marker. I still have a few... Um, a few questions. So I'm going to pause this for a minute and come back because I need to get my colored pencils. Okay, I am back. So I um, just went to grab these are my Prismacolor pencils. And so I've really been enjoying using these just to, um, honestly, all I do is just follow the line art. And this might not be dark enough. Let's see, let's grab... Let's grab this guy here. Um, I like to see some contrast. And all I do, and I don't blend these or anything I haven't at least thus far, is I just follow the line art um, on the page. And I think it works pretty well to create just some, some contrast. All right, so I'm going to definitely say for that last question, it was the miniature series of the mandalas, and I'm going to say miniature series just because that's the only thing that I've colored thus far. I'm really enjoying them. They don't take much time to color. I think the illustrations are really nice. I think these are going to lend well to buddy colors. Um, also, I just think this is a little bit more, I guess, of a unique idea. So I'm going to say that I like this series. All right, so next question. Buddy color or a color on your own? 
this has been a somewhat controversial topic. Um, I think for especially people who are on color tube in public, um, because we get a lot of requests of buddy color over the course of a month. And um, I'm going to just acknowledge that coloring on your own is nice because you get to kind of choose to go at your own pace. And I think what's stressful about buddy colors is that you feel pressured to get something complete. Um, and I have definitely felt that. I have had times where buddy colors for me get to be stressful. I had a month of that, I think maybe in February. And usually if people have a tendency to reach out to buddy color right at the beginning of a month, which makes sense because people will have wrapped up stuff from the month before you're talking about what you're planning on doing and people are going, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I'd love to do that too. I'd love to color with, you know, a color tuber and color that page and get that done. Um, and so people reach out at the beginning of the month. And so um, my, my answer really is, is that I prefer buddy colors. And here's why. Um, number one, it has caused me to step out of my comfort zone. Um, like even I had the goal for the month to color in each of these books, like one page. And I had somebody reach out to me. It's Misty actually from Country Gals Coloring Place. Reached out to me and was like, well, hey, why don't we buddy color out of the romantic miniatures book? And I was already so intimidated that I was like, kind of debating whether or not I wanted to even go back on my commitment and say like, oh, no, 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 like, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna color out of these books, or I'm not gonna color as many as I thought I would. And what it did is it encouraged me to just jump in. And I'm so, so glad that she reached out because um, if she had not reached out and already started to kind of push me towards doing this, then I might have held back and not not done something outside of my comfort zone. So I'm very grateful for that. And a lot of my buddy colors have been that way. A lot of my buddy colors, I think most of my buddy colors are in non-color by number books. And, or they are in books that I wasn't thinking about pulling out that month. Um, because usually when people reach out to me, a lot of times they have a book in mind that they want to buddy color in. Um, sometimes they don't, and that's okay too. Um, and we can work together to figure out what books we have in common, but um, it's how I learned about stickles. It's how I learned about different techniques and shading because I have learned from the people I have buddy colored with. They will post their completed page, and then I'll go like, holy smokes, wow, like that's amazing work. Like how did you how did you do that? And they usually will very kindly be like, oh, well, this is the step that I took, or this is the technique that I used, or this is the, you know, whatever. And I learned from them. And so I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity to buddy color with so many people because I have expanded, um, you know, my my knowledge of coloring and so I'm extremely grateful for that. Okay, that I also don't think is dark enough. Let's choose this guy. This guy is, oh this is sepia. This is a very dark. Okay, sorry, just trying to figure out my colors. I have to choose something that really contrasts with the marker. So that I can make sure that I can see it after I color. So do you see how that like adds just a little bit of dimension to the pumpkins? I think that's awesome. So buddy colors it is. Okay, we got to get through this. Um, number 16, trying a new artist or buying from an old favorite. So I will say if it is me and I am having an opportunity to buy a new book, I'm usually buying from an old favorite. I mean, who isn't? It's it's kind of what you feel comfortable with. However, I I also watch a lot of color tube and I am enabled rather frequently. So sometimes I have a lot this year. Tried a lot of new artists. Camelia Angelkova is a new artist for me. Um, I have tried a lot of new artists just from watching color tube. So it's a little bit of a mixed bag for me, but typically 
typically if I'm hopping on Amazon, it's usually because there is one of my favorite artists has come out with a new book and I have to have it in my collection. So honestly, it's usually an old favorite. The ones that are new artists to me have a tendency to just end up on my wish list. So that as birthdays or rewards come around and I need to pick a book, then I can kind of consider stepping outside of my box and trying something new. Um, okay, next one. Colorful or neutral. Well, this, I guess, is like it's darker colors. It is still rather colorful. I'm a colorful gal. Um, Emily from Color Me Impressed, we did a buddy color where we chose each other's color palette, which was really fun because she by far, by far is a neutral person. Um, and I am not, I'm usually choosing very bright um, and bold colors. So they just make me happy. It's just what I gravitate towards. My apartment when I was in college was hot pink and orange. Um, and that is what my roommate and I agreed on. And um, I loved it. I loved it. I don't think I would ever do that color palette again. And like if, if I had to go back and choose, but for, for a college room and stuff, it was a lot of fun and I loved it. I loved it. So bright color palette for me is always going to be what I choose. Um, typically color a page in one sitting or work on it little, little by little. Okay. So it was actually in this tag <laughs> where it's talked about. So I am a person where, like I mentioned, I have to color the whole image in a day. I may have to set something down, you know, for a little while and go do something like run an errand or something, you know, or my kids wake up from, um, you know, their nap or something like that. If I'm coloring while they're sleeping, um, but even then, I have to finish it within that day, usually. Um, there's probably very, very, very rare circumstances where I don't finish a page in a day and set it down and sleep. It will haunt me in my dreams, I swear to you. <laughs> um, I don't know what it is, but I just I have to finish it. But I've always been that way. Once I start a task, my husband hates it too because... When it comes to even things like cleaning the house, it's like I have to do everything. It, you know, he'll be just like, well, why don't you just clean this one area of the house and then come back and clean the rest of the bathroom or whatever later? And I'm like, no, like you can't, you can't do that. <laughs> He's like, yes, you can. But I, I just, for me, it's too hard. It legitimately is too hard. It is too hard for me to do. So I have to do it all in one sitting. All right. So last two, color while watching TV or while watching YouTube. Um, so I usually color. So if I have something on, so like I said, I kind of color in silence typically. But if I have something on, what I have on usually is um, YouTube. I watch YouTube way more than I watch TV. I really don't watch TV, even like streaming services, much anymore at all. I used to watch streaming services a lot. I think when I was, especially after I had my daughter, when I was on maternity leave, you know, you're kind of stuck to the couch. You're kind of glued to the couch with the baby um, most of the time. And so I usually, in those circumstances, would do... Um, um, would watch like a lot. I watch like a lot of Netflix and stuff, but, um, not anymore. Not any more. Let's see if this will work for the yellow. Um, yeah. And then the last one is color by number pixel mosaics or standard color by number. Um, so for my color by number, I would say, so... Pixels are not my favorites. Those are probably, those are actually likely like my least favorite. 
um, are the pixel style books. I would say the one exception to that is like they have to be the five by five pixels, like the larger pixels. So like the ones that you see in the Disney books, um, such and such diva also has some that are in five by five. There are some other publishers that have five by five pixels. I do like those, but I am not much of a pixel gal at all. Um, I do, however, really like the mosaic um, color by number. That is my, um, the mosaic color by number is by far my favorite. Um, like, like what you see with Color Questopia, the kind of stained glass mosaic type of look. Um, so I do like that a lot. And then standard color by number um, is somewhere in between for me. Um, it depends upon what standard color by number, how you define that. Um, there's like the little fairies book, which is by Belba family, um, which is a great one because it's not that hard. And then you have like the George Tufexis, um, the like super challenging, um, the super challenging standard color by number. And that is not my jam. I have George, I have one George Dufexis book. I have his Christmas book, which is gorgeous. And I have colored a couple of images out of it and probably will again, um, closer to this Christmas because they're so pretty. I mean, when they're done, they're gorgeous, but ain't nobody got time for that. They take forever to do. And so, um, that's one of those things too. That is a book that I have to do over a series of days. Um, usually that book takes me two or three sittings to finish because of all the detail um, that's in there. Now, when it, like I said, when it's done, it's a stunner, but I just don't have the patience for that. That's also why I don't usually color like a complete image in colored pencil is because like all of the time you have to take to do all the blending and all of that like I am just too lazy <laughs> to do all of that so that's kind of where I sit so I think that is actually it for the questions that are a part of this coloring tag um so Michaela Renee was the very first person to come up with this tag so thank you to Michaela for sponsoring such an awesome, awesome tag. I had fun answering these questions. So what I am going to do is I am going to time lapse so that you can see me finish this image. And then I will come back to you at the very end. I will show you what I did and I will um, let you know who I will be tagging to complete this tag. So I will see you all soon. Bye. So this escalated very quickly. <laughs> um, you saw my um, time lapse. And so you guys saw just kind of like a few seconds. Um, what really was more like 30 minutes of me kind of sh finishing shading and doing some accent details. And um, I actually had filmed an outro after that. But I wasn't really happy with the way that the page turned out. I added all of these like white dots. I was trying to add kind of an effect like adding glitter without adding glitter and I made some of the dots just too big and they looked really funky and then I also added all these dots around different areas of the mushroom and the apple which looked really weird 
So I kind of tried to cover it up and add some other things and I just wasn't happy with it. Um, what I was happy with though was I did go and add some of this Distress Oxide. This is in the color Bundled Sage. And what I did is I just took, it's like a makeup applicator and just kind of went around the area and it kind of gave it this really kind of dreamy fantasy type of look, which I really, really liked. I will tell you, I definitely like these Distress Oxides more than the Distress Inked. So then after that, I still was like, man, I'm just not happy. <laughs> and so I just threw up glitter all over it. And I, I will say I'm not terribly pleased. I like it better than I did, but I'm not like jumping for joy over it. It's probably not my best work. However, I am still happy with it. So let me tell you what I did. I did, um, I added um, stickles to kind of those areas where I had those big dots just to give it some shine. On the acorns, I had used some metallic jelly roll, but then when I, I went in and just added some, I have some, um, oh, it's it's in the, it comes in the sickle bottles. It's like the pearl, what do you call it? It's this stuff, it's by Ranger. What is this? Liquid pearls. So I added that around the acorns, which I really liked. This I think was the color of stickles that I used and because I got this from Michaels, it doesn't have a name, um, but I used this one. And then I did, um, uh, what else did I use? Oh, I used, this was a gift from my aunt, which was, these are the, um, it's not a glossy accent, it's a crackle accent. I saw Kathy um, from Spicy Cat Colors use this and I was really fascinated. And so I used it on the acorns. It definitely is an interesting look and you're probably not gonna be able to see it very well um, on camera, but it is like crackly. Um, it's very interesting, but still kind of glossy. So that's like, okay. Um, and then I added the stickles around here. I'm actually kind of okay with everything except the stickles right here kind of look funny, but I actually like it better than what it was. I feel like my story now with this is that, um, this is a magical forest. And so that's a magical apple and magical mushroom that the porcupine uses to come to life. I don't know, you know, one of those things I had to come up with my own creative story. And then I did also use my Jelly Roll Glaze, which I love that line of Jelly Roll gel pen. Um, and so I use it around the mushrooms, around the pumpkins. Um, I use it around the porcupine spines. And then I also used the clear Jelly Roll Glaze on his eyes. And um, I use the pink in his ears and nose. Um, so yeah, so this is how this turned out. I need to tag three people for this tag. And so I did look, and these people at least haven't posted videos yet. I will be tagging Kathy from Spicy Cat Colors. Um, for this tag, Tiffany from Tiffany Color 79 and Sonia from Sonia's Mixed Media. Um, I'd love for you guys to do um, this tag and uh, see kind of what your answers are. So with that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of the day. I will see you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.